All right, well, while the storm just wrapped up their season, the Seattle Mariners are barreling toward the playoffs in better shape than they've been in a really, really, really long time. <laughs> After another win last night, the M's are 18 games above 500, and they are tied with Tampa Bay for the number one wild card spot. This is so exciting. Here to discuss one of the most is one of the most recognizable faces and voices <laughs> in Seattle sports. We're thrilled to welcome back to New Day Mariners broadcaster Rick Riz. Hi, Susie. Welcome back. How are you? It's nice to see oh, you. And it's nice to see you, too. Yeah, yeah. How are you doing? <laughs> Good. Okay. Today is September 7th, mm -hmm. and the Mariners are playing games now that really matter. Yes. I mean, Big not th Right. I mean, we have to say that. What's it like to be in the radio booth and that oh. vibe, as my kids would say, oh. out there? Susie, it is so exciting right now. The ball club is heading for the playoffs for the first time in a long time. Last time the Mariners got there 21 years ago back in 2001 when they had that magical year winning a major league record 116 games. But this team is built for the playoffs and to go deep into the playoffs because the pitching is just so good. Jerry Depoto did a great job and his uh, scouting department, the baseball analytics. Scott Service, I think, deserves to be the manager yes. of the year. He should have won the award last year by putting together this ball club. Last year was really the springboard, Susie. They went out and won 90 games when a lot of people in baseball thought they were going to lose right. 90. They won 90, and they were a win or two away from getting to the playoffs last year. But Jerry went out, and he signed uh, as a free agent. Uh, the American League Cy Young Award winner from last year, Robbie Ray, who was with Toronto. We got him now for the, at least for the yeah. next five. And then the trade with Cincinnati to get Jesse Winker and A. Eugenio Suarez. And then to go out and get one of the best pitchers in baseball at the trade deadline in Luis Castillo, coupled with the young players that have been so exciting. Logan Gilbert last night winning his 12th game of the year, Cal Raleigh and, the and George Kirby. It's, it's very exciting to be yeah. in the booth because there's so much yeah. excitement, you know, ar around the ballpark and it's a lot of fun. The chemistry in the dugout, it looks like it's so oh. good and you see the dancing yeah what what are you seeing what do, what are they feeling I'm seeing a ball club that's it's having fun you know it's it's fun to win and they're doing a lot of winning right now they have the best record in the American League since June uh, June the 21st and the second best record in baseball behind only the Dodgers so they're having a good time they take it from the clubhouse they're a family in there these guys are close-knit they take it out in the field and it shows they're playing great baseball like I said, the pitching is the best in, in baseball, so they're just having a great time right now winning, and it shows the fans are showing up like crazy, and the energy in the ballpark is just incredible. It, it's wonderful to see how you put that all together, building what we saw last year, and we kind of were teased with that. Well, maybe yeah. with that 90 games, and then and to see this is so is just yeah. exciting. So as of this morning, the Mariners are tied with Tampa right. uh, Bay for the number one wild card spot. Right. So this remains a very, very close race. Um, can you explain why, when we look at the other contenders, that the Mariners are in such good shape going into this right now? Yeah, they're, they're built for the playoffs. So they're built for going deep in the playoffs because the starting pitching is so good. You know, you added, like I said, Robbie Ray during the offseason, one of the best pitchers in baseball. You add Luis Castillo during the course of the season to go along with Marco Gonzalez, who is outstanding. This guy is so competitive. Two great young pitchers in Logan Gilbert and, and George Kirby. And, and when with that starting staff, you know, you, right behind them, they're getting deep in the ball games. Right behind them is the best bullpen in baseball, Paul Sewell. Then you got a young kid who's really burst onto the scene. Uh, Andres Munoz throwing 102 miles an hour with a great slider. To hear so, you yeah, say Munoz is Munoz. so exciting. It, it is watching these guys come to the ballpark. They're now the Los Bomberos. They have an identity. <laughs> they have a name. They're the firefighters. You know, they come in with all this energy and excitement. It's just, it's just so much uh, fun to watch this team. But I'm excited about uh, the next few days to the to end watch. of the regular season and into October okay, for the who's, postseason. Who's been your biggest surprise as of late? I'd, I'd have to say Julio Rodriguez. This kid is only 21 years of age, loaded with talent, and here he is, his rookie season. Last year he started off at Everett and then right. went to AA Arkansas and bypassed AAA, went, out, went to spring training. He had a great spring, and he makes the ball club. We're thinking maybe he can, he can be a corner outfielder, left field or right field, but he goes out there and proves he can play center field. And he makes the all-star team right. at the age of 21. This kid's talent is just off the charts. The way that he plays the game, his charisma, his joy for the game, the smile, his interaction with the fans, are, they already have the no-fly zone out there I, in right field and, and the J-Rod squad. So I think that's fans what fans feel, that, that what you just said, the joy for the game. They feel that they respond to that. How about um, Cal Raleigh? 
oh my goodness, he's, he's part of the really core of the young players that have really made leaps and bounds, uh, you know, uh, this year. He, last, at the early part of the year, he was in like 083, really struggling, went down to AAA, came back, figured things out, made adjustments, quick to the ball, and now he's been one of the best hitters in the American League. Over the last few weeks, the last few months, he has more home runs than any catcher in the American League right now. He had a big two-run home run last night in the bottom of the eighth inning to seal the deal, a 3 nothing shutout win yesterday over the Chicago White Sox. But this kid is doing it at home plate. He's doing it behind the plate, catching all these guys. He's made so such a big improvement this year. What's your message to the fans, especially as we're knee-deep in this seven-game <laughs> homestand? I tell you what, my message to the fans is you're taking a look at one of the most exciting teams in baseball right now. You got your veterans on the ball club. Mariners really missed Mitch Hanniger in the early part of the year now he's back and then you got the young players uh, that have really added to it uh, like Cal Raleigh and George Kirby and Munoz and uh, Logan Gilbert and on and on. Matt Brash started the year in the rotation now he's working out of the bullpen this is one of the most exciting teams I've seen in my 40 years here and 95 was great that was a team that <laughs> saved baseball 2001 it was a team that won 116 games but this team is is built for the playoffs and, and they're gonna get us there Okay, so I have to ask, you've been calling games since what, you were 12 years old <laughs> in, the, in the basement of your family home, yeah, yeah. right? <clears throat> um, are there any phrases you came up with back then that, that have transferred over? Uh, no, <clears throat> uh, not really. You know, when I was 12 years old, I'd come home from school and my mother, bless her heart, was the biggest Cub fan in the world and she loved Ernie Banks and Ron Santo, who was born and raised here in Seattle. And, and so I'd watch the game with her, but there were times where I'd go downstairs turned on our big TV set down there, our Zenith TV, and, uh, and pretend I was Jack Brickhouse. I'd watch the game, turn down the sound, and do play-by-play -play when I was 12 years old. Here's Ernie Banks swinging a fly ball, and it's gone, a grand slam, you know. But uh, so that's how I got started. When I was 12, I wrote Mr. Brickhouse a letter. Jack Brickhouse was the Hall of Fame broadcaster right. for the Chicago Cubs, and he wrote me back a letter. And uh, I was very inspired by his letter, and this is what I wanted to do ever since I was 12 years old. So. Fast forward, you know, college, Southern Illinois University, eight years in the minor leagues. Dave Niehaus of the Mariners hired wow. me in 1983. That letter. And, well, and did, so, did you I'm ever here. imagine you would spend so much time with one team? I, I wanted to. <laughs> that was the goal. And oh. I was here for nine years, and I went to Detroit and tried to follow Ernie Harwell. That didn't work out. And Mr. Niehaus, David, got me back here again. So I, thank goodness I didn't miss the 1995 season. So I've been here for 37 years. And I love it here. I grew up on the south side of Chicago, but Seattle is my home and has been for a long time. Well, you two are magic together. Oh, thank Rick you. Rick Riz and the team. Thank you so much. Susie, great to see you. Come All on right. out to the ballpark. All right, I'm going. Okay. Today.